In this video, we're going to discuss the discovery of the nucleus. So at this point, we've discussed Dalton's atomic theory from the early 1800s uh, that established the atom as a building block of matter. And then we discussed the discovery of the electron from J.J. Thompson in the later 1800s uh, that really was the first view into the fact that there are subatomic particles that exist. And he came up with a model for the atom called the plum pudding model, where he Im imagined the atom as this sea of positive charge with these little negative charged particles embedded into it. Uh, the discovery of the nucleus came shortly after Thompson's experiment. So we're talking early 1900s. Uh, but before we discuss any of the nuts and bolts of the experiment that led to the discovery of the nucleus, it's important to understand a little bit about radioactivity. And my goal here is not to, to go deep into radioactivity. That's something that we'll discuss a little bit later uh, in the course. But, uh, but for now, just to have a working understanding of what we're talking about. So uh, basically, radioactivity is the radiation that comes off of unstable atoms. Right. And there's different types of radioactive particles that can be emitted. There's gamma particles, which are basically high energy light. There's beta particles, which are essentially like electrons and uh, there are alpha particles. And it's really important for us to understand alpha particles because they were used and, and central in the discovery of the nucleus. So an alpha particle. So this is the Greek letter alpha. So an alpha particle. There's two things you need to understand about an alpha particle. First, it is a particle with a plus two charge. So it has a plus two overall charge. So it's, it's, a, it's a very highly positively charged particle, but also that it has a mass. It's very large uh, on a subatomic scale. So it has a mass that is over 7,000 times larger than an electron. So it has a mass that is 7,000 plus times larger than an electron. Right, so we have these uh, radioactive particles, these alpha particles, that have a, a significant positive charge and that have a large mass. They're 7,000 times larger than any electrons, right? So, uh, so this is all you really need to understand from radioactivity in order to understand the experiment that led to the discovery of the nucleus, right? So now let's kind of review that plum pudding model and kind of talk about uh, what the general idea was behind this experiment that led to the discovery of the nucleus, right? So again, drawing out this plum pudding model, we have an atom that's all positive charge, and we have these little negatively charged particles that are embedded in it. Right, so what uh, Ernest Rutherford, uh, who's the gentleman pictured here next to his experimental setup. Uh, Ernest Rutherford in the early 1900s uh, was going off of this plum pudding model, trying to either confirm or, or deny this model of the atom. Based off of this model, what his hypothesis was, was that if he came through with alpha particles, right, these highly positively charged, um, you know, very heavy, uh, particles compared to to electrons, right? If he was able to bombard uh, atoms with alpha particles, that those alpha particles would just shred through this atom like butter, right? So basically, this will be the trajectory of an alpha particle going through an atom based on the plum pudding model, right? So we'll go ahead and label this. This was the hypothesis, right? If the plum pudding model is correct, right? So these alpha particles and this line that I'm drawing, these are the alpha particles and their path through an atom that is, uh, that, that follows the plum pudding model, right? Basically, okay, why would, would the path be straight and uninterrupted? 
well because uh, even though the positive charge would repel those uh, alpha particles, the plum pudding model says that the positive charge is spread out throughout the entire atom. So Rutherford's hypothesis was that, well, the, the positive charge is going to be way too spread out to be able to deflect the path of these alpha particles. And the electrons, uh, even though they're negatively charged and would you know, attract these positive charges, they're way too small to, to do anything to alpha particles that are traveling at an object at high speed, right? So basically his hypothesis was that, okay, if I come through with alpha particles to any atom that has this type of structure, those alpha particles are just gonna go straight through uninterrupted right? Um, or if they're deflected, maybe slightly, right? So this is uh, a schematic of Rutherford's, what's, what's known now as the gold foil experiment. Uh, basically, what you have is a radiation source. Originally, you used radium. You could use any other um, radioactive material that would produce some alpha particles, right? So he has a radiation source that produces an alpha particle beam, right? Um, and what he had the alpha particle beam hitting was a gold foil. So basically gold atoms. And what he wanted to do, he had a, a sheet, a fluorescent screen, right? So similar to J.J. Uh, Thompson's detector, right? He used a fluorescent screen. So when those uh, particles hit the screen, they would emit or spark or, or, you know, leave some trace behind to where he could track whether they're deflected or, or what direction they go. If the plum pudding model is correct, then all of these alpha particles, when they're bombarded onto the gold foil, should just pass through with very little to no deflection. And by and large, a lot of them did, right? A lot of these alpha particles, you can see the beam going through, straight through for the gold foil. Some of them are deflected slightly. But what he did not expect and what occurred was that some of them were deflected uh, at very odd angles, some of them more than 90 degrees in their angle of deflection, right? This is very, very surprising considering uh, the plum pudding model as your hypothesis. In fact, uh, Rutherford was so flabbergasted by this. He, uh, he called it the most amazing thing he ever saw. And in fact, he used the analogy of saying, imagine if you um, shot a shotgun shell at tissue and one of the shotgun shells came back at you. I mean, that was how um, how surprising this deflection of alpha particles in the gold foil experiment was. So he had to come up with some way to explain why this was happening. It was clear from this result that the model for the atom had to be refined in some way, right? And so this was how Rutherford uh, modified the atomic model to account for this deflection of these alpha particles, right? So let's draw another circle here. Um, so he still has the, the basic premise of the atom, right? That there's some positive, some negative charge there in order for it to be neutrally charged. But what he proposed is that instead of having a C of positive charge, there is a densely populated cluster of positive charge that sits at the center of the atom. And then the electrons, the, the negatively charged particles, are still just floating around out there to make up the rest of the volume of the atom. Right now, think to yourself why this might explain the trajectory. Um, you might want to try to pause the video and see if you can um, uh, kind of convince yourself why this would explain the uh, trajectory that we see for the alpha particles in the gold foil. All right. So telling you kind of the result here, um, this explains the alpha particles trajectory in the following way. Imagine an alpha particle that hits this gold atom up here. Right. It would actually follow. Uh, Rutherford's original hypothesis, it would be very mildly, if at all, affected by passing through this region not close to the nucleus. But if you have an alpha particle that comes through and gets anywhere close to the nucleus, basically Ruther Rutherford was saying that this positive charge is so densely packed that if it hits anywhere close to the nucleus, it's going to deflect off. Right. Deflect off at some angle. Right. If you get any of these particles that 
these alpha particles that come in and hit that densely po populated uh, pocket of positive charge, then it's going to deflect off, right? And anything, like I said, that, that goes through kind of doesn't really approach the nucleus, those will go through straight. So you kind of see that with these uh, alpha particle beams that are mildly deflected, right? Okay, so this Rutherford model, so we, we call this now the Rutherford model. This is the Rutherford model of the atom. And basically, it refines the plum pudding model by saying, okay, there's, we know there can't be a sea of positive charge because if there was, then it wouldn't be concentrated enough to deflect the alpha particles in that way. So what we must have is somewhere in that atom must be a densely populated pocket of positive charge. That's the only way that we would be able to see this level of deflection as what we saw in the Rutherford gold foil experiment. 